Now on Tech Tonight, Homecoming Honors, Campus is Transformed for Homecoming Week, find out who was crowned King and Queen. Development Dilemma, New Student Housing is creating a stir in the community. We'll show you why residents are fighting back. Virginia Tech now has a new king and queen. Welcome to Tech Tonight. I'm Bailey Berticelli. And I'm Lexi Johnson. This year's homecoming festivities took over campus last week. Throughout the week, there were several activities with the entire homecoming court, including Family Feud and a relay race. But the real fun started with the Laugh Riot featuring Nick Cannon's Wild and Out, followed by a concert the next day with top country music artist Hunter Hayes and special guest Ryan Lafferty. The remainder of the week was filled with the homecoming spirit rally and the parade. Homecoming week concluded on Saturday as we took on the ECU Pirates and crowned our new 2016 homecoming king and queen. This year, 16 candidates represented a plethora of different service organizations. The winners were Pat Finn and Becky Oswald. The newly crowned queen says that faith was her motivation for running. You know, as someone who follows Jesus, I think it's really important to, to serve others and to show people love through that. And, and service isn't always this glamorous thing that makes a great Instagram photo, but it, it is about sacrifice and that comes from love. Sponsored by VT Crew, Allspot's platform was branched out in service, support the Giving Tree Food Pantry. Finn, sponsored by the German Club, ran on the platform Finding Hope with Finn. Homecoming wasn't the only thing students were able to enjoy last week. The campus was looking a little more green than usual for S Sustainability Week. Tech Tonight reporter Claire Rigney takes a look at how students were taking a green initiative this week. During Virginia Tech's annual Sustainability Week, the university and the town of Blacksburg teamed together to show the locals' commitment to environmentalism and clean living. Sustainability Week is organized by Virginia Tech, the town of Blacksburg, and local group Sustainable Blacksburg. The events during this week cover topics like renewable energy, recycling, and living with a smaller carbon footprint. This event has helped the development of green projects on Virginia Tech's campus, like the solar powered trash compactors and the automatic water refill stations. Sustainability Week began in 2007, which means that 2016 is its 10th anniversary. It was the single event that put sustainability on the map on this campus. It's you know, to me, when I look back 10 years ago and realized that most people, including myself, couldn't even spell sustainability, and now you look at it and it's, it's a way of life. Mackenzie Jarvis is the alternative transportation manager for Virginia Tech. At her event, the Active Commuting Celebration, she encouraged people to use fewer single occupancy vehicles when heading to work or class. A, a significant challenge is knowing all the opportunities that are available to people um, in terms of alternative modes that, you know, there's more than just bringing a car to campus every day. And 14.7 percent of all campus affiliates, so faculty, staff, students, rely on bikes as a primary mode of transportation. We're here to support and encourage and uh, anyone any way we can and also see what we can do about uh, providing some safety messaging and encouraging people to be safe while doing it. Cochran says that events for next year's Sustainability Week may be different depending on what ends up being the most effective. Reporting from Squire Student Center, I'm Claire Rigney for Tech Tonight. Local Blacksburg residents are voicing their concerns about upcoming construction in the area. Land Pro Development Group announced their plans to build 675 bedroom student housing complexes on North Main Street. The area currently known as the Lofts at Blacksburg is located at 1310 North Main Street and 1230 North Main Street. The plan is to have commercial businesses facing the street and two five-story living floors above. A town-wide neighborhood meeting was held following the announcement on Thursday, September 23rd, where a number of locals came out to express their fears. Numerous attendants listed lack of parking and overwhelming traffic as the biggest potential side effects of the development. LandPro's Chief Operating Officer, Michael Karuba, said that they are taking the local concerns into consideration. There will be a series of more public meetings held on the subject. No date has been announced on when construction will begin. Invent the Future is taking on a new meaning for one group of Virginia Tech students. Tech Tonight reporter Ashley Willis looks at a group of students working to create a new means of transportation. Nestled in between apartment complexes and farming land, students at Virginia Tech are working on an entirely new means of transportation. The Hyperloop is all part of a competition by SpaceX to create a high-speed transportation that is cheaper than a plane and more fuel-efficient than a car. 
Well, just two weeks ago, we unveiled the pod, which was uh, the goal was to you know get some public exposure to our pod um, and show these companies that have given us sponsorship, man, look at what we've been doing. Um, we're doing great. The initial project began several months ago when they entered their design. They were then able to move up and begin building and testing, but says that as they began working on everything, adjustments had to be made. Since the release of the design, they are now building a test track. The goal is to just for us to be able to test that the pod dimensionally fits the track, um, and go, uh, the ideal goal is so that we can move fast enough so that our levitation magnets uh, will list, lift us off of our uh, wheel bearings. The team is comprised entirely of students with some assistance from faculty. They are competing against companies like Hyperloop One in California, Team Delft, and schools like MIT. Buss says that working on this project as a school is able to give the project a new perspective. A lot of companies, the main goal is to, you know, profit, uh, help their shareholders. And so I think when you get into a company, you're doing a very specific role um, and you're really good at one thing. And I think this allows you not only to experience all those different roles and get a background in all these roles, which is, I believe, the purpose of education and, you know, bringing our engineers up to, you know, a for commercial projects, but it's, it's that, that idea of, okay, I found all these different you know, things that I like. What do I like the most? What would I like to study and find? Get the details. Get, how can we get that much better at that one thing? Buss says that his team is looking forward to the upcoming competition in January. They say that both the new track and continuously working on the design will be able to put them ahead of the competition. Reporting from Inventive Way, Ashley Wills, Tech Tonight. Last week was the first week of fall, but temperatures still felt like summer. Let's see if there will be cooler weather in our future. Meteorologist Catherine Maxwell has your forecast. Catherine? Hello everybody, I'm student VTTV meteorologist Catherine Maxwell. Here is a look at your weather headlines for the coming up week. Mainly sunny with dry conditions will be in the forecast. And now that we are in the season of fall, it will start to feel like fall as our temperatures are starting to cool down. And with that, the days will start to become shorter. So the dog days of summer are soon to be over. The surface map shows that there is no activity for the eastern portion of the United States. So we're in a bit of a dry spell, which will last for most of the week. Tonight's temperatures are on a bit of a cooler side as we are reaching a low of 48 degrees. Partly cloudy with winds coming from the west as a light speed of 5 miles per hour for Sunday. We are reaching a high of 70 degrees so this will be a beautiful day to study outside as the conditions will be mostly sunny and these are our last days of summer. A look at the next 5 days is showing temperatures in the upper 60s and low 70s as our high. But our lows are dropping into the higher 40s and low 50s which sounds very bizarre for me to say since we we have not been in, been witnessing these cooler temperatures. Former Hokie quarterback Marcus Vick is in legal trouble again as he faces a possible five-day jail sentence for missing his September 1st court hearing. Montgomery County Circuit Court Judge Brett Geisler filed paperwork Friday, September 23rd, saying that he is holding Vick in contempt and is sentencing him to serve five days behind bars. The hearing was in regards to a $40,000 settlement from a, the past civil lawsuit case that was filed back in 2006. The civil lawsuit immediately led to Vic's departure from the Virginia Tech football team in 2006 as well. According to court records, Vic has not paid any of the settlement and, in addition to interest and attorney fees, has racked up a bill of over $100,000. Vic's Radford attorney, Jimmy Turk, motioned for a withdrawal on the case, stating that he can no longer reach Vic. Vic's whereabouts Whereabouts are unknown as of Tuesday, September 27th, and a warrant has yet to be released ordering his arrest. Some students may be eligible for a new scholarship. Welcome to your entertainment news, and I'm Christian Rice. And I'm Brianna McGowan. The families of Virginia Tech employees are receiving some well-deserved things as their children and spouses will now receive scholarships. Through acts of hokey respect by fellow Virginia Tech employees, Virginia Tech put together a program called the Employee Spouse and Dependent Scholarship Fund. The fund has received over $127,000 in donations since its start in 2000, which were then rewarded to the grateful families. 191 incoming Virginia Tech students that are members of the class of 2020 received the scholarships. First year and transfer students are also eligible for the scholarship. 
The program partners with Virginia Tech's annual faculty and staff campaign, supported by Presidential Dependent Scholarship Endowment. With college expenses so high nowadays, it is definite that the fund is making a difference in the lives of students and making them feel a part of the Hokie Nation family. To apply for the scholarship, visit the Scholarship Gateway on Virginia Tech's financial aid website. Virginia Tech juniors will soon have the opportunity to view the designs for their class of 2018 rings. Next week, Ring Premier will give students the opportunity to view the ring designs before they make their orders. Every year, students design their own rings with the help of graphic designer Balfour. Each ring is especially tailored with one side representing the university as a whole and the other side representing the specific class. Virginia Tech has celebrated this tradition, which includes Ring Premier, Ring Dance, and Saber Arch since 1914. Ring premiere will take place on October 4th at 8 p.m. in Burris Hall Auditorium, after which ring ordering will be open. Fireworks over the drill field will finish off the annual event. Those start at 9 p.m. Virginia Tech was ranked number four in the nation by the Princeton Review for Food, but this year they didn't just look at the dining halls. Tech Tonight reporter Lauren Pack takes an inside look at the two new food trucks that have rolled into campus. We go from a place where you can freely walk around to a spot where you're like sliding in between uh, your co-workers and stuff. We're still working on like how to make sure some stuff doesn't spill during transportation and we've gotten pretty good at it. Like now it's like once a week. It's kind of a fun challenge to try to figure out a new way to uh, help serve the students at Virginia Tech. Students here are no stranger to food trucks and it seems that the two new additions to Virginia Tech Dining will become a campus staple. Currently, the food trucks offer classic American and Asian fusion options. Like the dining halls also have lunch rush, but are able to serve customers without long wait times. They are products of long time planning and collaboration between more than 10 university departments and are custom built and designed by dining services. With the hopes of initiating a conversation about bullying and laws, Virginia Tech screened the movie Bully Fighters. While growing up, many youth will likely find themselves on one side of bullying. It is an epidemic that has costed the lives of many youth and incited much controversy and protest among parents, schools, and communities. It is a problem that has gotten out of hand with the emergence of new technology and social media sites. Bullies are able to find comfort in remaining anonymous on social media sites, giving them the confidence to attack and demean others online, even if they wouldn't in person. Scott Geller, a Virginia Tech professor in the psychology department, felt the short film was a necessity to give the student body not only thinking, but acting. The Virginia Tech Department of Psychology, the Actively Caring for People movement, campus organizations, and a nonprofit called the National Center for Prevention of Community Violence sponsored the free event. Jupiter J. Makins wrote and directed the film in which he posed posed the possibility of invoking more serious bullying laws. Directly after the showing, there was a follow-up panel discussion. The panel consisted of Makins, actress Patricia McKenzie, as well as Senior Associate Vice President of Student Affairs and Professors of Virginia Tech. National Bully Prevention and Awareness Month starts this month. Coming up in your Hokie Sports News, after losing two years in a row to the ECU Pirates, the Hokies took the field on homecoming weekend to try to stop the streak. Plus, the women's tennis team took on the Cavaliers. We'll give you the recap next. The Virginia Tech football team took the field for homecoming weekend. Welcome to your Hokie Sports News. I'm Michelle Polanka. And I'm Billy Parvatan. On Saturday afternoon at Lane Stadium, Hokie Nation came out decked in orange to see VT football take on the East Carolina Pirates. The home crowd left happy as Virginia Tech soundly beat ECU 54-17. Virginia Tech got off to a fast start as they scored on their last five possessions of the first half. Greg Stroman returned a punt return for a touchdown much to the joy of the fans. And Isaiah Ford, Marshawn Williams, and Trayvon McMillan all added touchdowns respectfully as the Hokies built a 38-0 lead at halftime and never looked back. 
Gerard Evans continued his stellar early season play as he completed 13 of 282 yards and three touchdown passes, while also rushing for 97 yards and a highlight reeling 55-yard touchdown run. Isaiah Ford added four receptions for 117 yards and a touchdown, and Beamer Ball was on full display Saturday as the Hokies returned a punt for a touchdown, as well as scoring 49 points in back-to-back -back games for the first time since 1999, a season which saw them go to the national title game. One alarm says that it's good to come back to a winning team. Yeah, it's it's awesome to like come back and like all the nostalgia hits you like a wave of emotions. It was just outside the stadium from my point of view, but um, you know, happy we got the W today and looking like we got a great football team on our hands. With the win, the Hokies improved to three and one on the year, with all three wins coming at home. After a bye week this upcoming week, they will be traveling to North Carolina in a battle of ACC foes. Last Sunday, the Virginia Tech's women's tennis team finished competing at the Virginia Fall Invitational in Charlottesville. Assistant coach Will Davis said despite the rough start, the team improved throughout. The women's tennis team represented the Hokies as they kept their heads up and showed great effort during the weekend-long tournament. Virginia Tech junior Caroline Daxalet had a fifth-place finish in the blue singles fight. Daxalet placed with a score of 8-5, beating Maryland's Alexandra Stanova. Additional highlights from the tournament include sophomore Emily Pence dropping an 8-4 decision over Maryland Cassandra Thebolt. The Hokies are playing in sunny Pacific Palisades, California in an eight-day tournament from October 2nd to October 9th. Virginia Tech Volleyball had a mixed weekend as they opened up ACC play at home. The Hokies were able to sweep Clemson on Friday night, but fell in four tough sets to Georgia Tech on Sunday afternoon. Virginia Tech opened up on Friday night against Clemson with a tough win in three sets, with each set being decided by eight points or less. Senior Amanda McKenzie led the way with 10 kills, 14 digs, and four aces, and Kelly Esch added three blocks in the winning effort. The first two sets featured key runs late by the Hokies to take the sets in nearly identical scores, 25-21 and 25-20 respectfully. The third set, however, was all Hokies as they led from start to finish to take the third set comfortably 25-17, with McKenzie putting forth six of her ten kills. Although Sunday's match resulted in a loss, the Hokies were competitive throughout, losing two of three by five points or less. McKenzie once again led the way with 18 kills and fellow senior Lindsay Owens contributed 13 kills and 17 digs, her eighth double-double of the season. One bright spot for the Hokies was their second set victory, a set which saw them fall behind match point twice before VT finally secured the win at 27-25. Ultimately, however, Georgia Tech proved too much for the Hokies as they won their second straight match in Blacksburg. With the weekend's results, the Hokies fell to 6-7 and seven overall, dropping to 1-1 one one in the ACC. They will be back at it Wednesday night to take on the Pittsburgh Panthers in another ACC matchup at Castle Coliseum. Virginia Tech men's soccer team fell short to the Clemson Tigers last Friday night at Thompson Field, but the Hokies fought strong during the game by keeping the score one to one until three minutes remaining on the clock. Hokies Elias Tamarini scored first in the 15th minute. Tamarini made the goal when a shot from Brendan Moyes rebounded off the goalpost. Tech continued to dominate possession through the middle of the first half. As the second half started, it was fair game with both teams pushing for that second goal. Unfortunately, the Hokies saw four great chances all sailing wide of the goalpost. The Tigers snagged a goal by Grayson Rayner in the 87th minute. Their next two major upcoming games are on October 4th against VMI and on October 7th against Duke. Coming up, we'll have a final look at the forecast. Stay tuned. Hello everybody, I'm out here reporting in front of Torgerson Bridge and there has been rain, rain and more rain as we have been going on through the past week. But now that we're hitting into Saturday, we're finally seeing a dry spell into our weather. We reached rain totals on Thursday of 2.3 inches and then Friday almost an inch but only 0.9 of an inch for Friday. So finally getting a break from the rain, enjoy your last days of summer.